All right, Daniel chapter 2. Now, how many of you have heard of uh, graphene oxide? Hmm? So I don't know if some of you have heard about that, but graphene oxide has been uh, the word from a lot of people about the concerns where the new world order is heading toward. All the advancement in technology and uh, even, all right, so I'm going to call, call this Fauci's fungus, all right? So Fauci's fungus, all right, Fauci's fungus has, there's a lot of concerns that graphene oxide may have been inserted inside this fungus. So within Fauci's fungus, there might be some of this element. And then I just use this uh, term loosely. It's a made-up fantastical term called Fauci's fungus, all right? It's not a realistic scenario, okay? So I'm just calling that word. It's a make-up believe word. You caught that? Did you catch that? AI, did you catch that? All right, all right. So there's a lot of concern that within Fauci's fungus that uh, people have caught wind of this. And what this all relates to with graphene oxide it all connects to carbon. Now, carbon, for some of you who don't know, it is life itself. We would not exist if there is no carbon. Carbon is so important. The purest form of carbon would go into diamond right here. So here are the elements we'll all be covering right here. Diamond, clay, graphite, gold. And then also, I've, I'm going to put this as iron. But because this is a biblical term, I'm going to put in quotes, all right? I'm going to put this in biblical terms. But carbon can also produce where they have a thing about graphene oxide. And it's basically a hex, uh, hexagon shape that they discuss it to be. And we'll get into that a little bit later, all right? but I'm going to return over here about the wonders of graphene. Now, scientists have boasted so much about the wonders of graphene, and for those of you who don't know, if you take uh, your pencil, that's where the graphene stuff comes out, the graphene elements. It's all from that pencil. So when you start writing, that's graphene stuff. For some of you who don't know, when you barbecue meat on charcoal and etc. That's, you're eating graphene, believe it or not. So within all of human system, we did intake graphene before, for some of you who didn't know that. If that's a shock to some of you, you might go, I didn't know that. Well, it, this might scare you more, but about graphene, what's scary about it is that scientists have found the mineral, the product that they need to advance technology. It's miraculous. Like, compared to all other minerals in the world, graphene is it. Once they use graphene, which uh, comes from graphite, and then if you oxidize it, oxidize it, then it can be graphene oxide. But graphene does so many wonders, does so many wonders. They're going to use it for 5G material. 5G, how it can connect, is that the graphene material is so helpful and can keep up with the fast system. It works out very well in flexibility, in a fast, uh, fast connections, great conductor of electricity, and etc. Graphene is it. So there's a video which was pretty scary. It's called, What's Graphene and Why It'll Soon Take Over the World? Now, in that video, when they discuss about graphene, it's so scary. They mention that what graphene can do is you can build, okay, listen up now. This is how scary it is. There is no doubt this is paving the way. This is the product that will pave the way for the new world order. Graphene can help in building up a space elevator. Now, in other words, so then you can build a tower that can reach up to heaven who, was, who tried to build a new world order that way before? Nimrod, but God disrupted it. But now mankind can do that, they say. 
and then they can build this space elevator. But the problem is the minerals, the products that can keep up with building such a high tower. Graphene is it. They said that they can do it with that one. So the video is called What's Graphene and Why It'll Soon Take Over the World. And it's three years ago, guys. Three years ago. That's how old the video is. And they told you that. Also, they mentioned about you can drink ocean water because of it. Graphene is so helpful where you can drink ocean water. Hmm, doesn't that sound revelation as well? Doesn't that sound apocalyptic? When the Bible says that God will make sure that he turns all the waters to blood in the tribulation, I wonder why. Maybe because these people are going to be using graphene to help to drink everything so that they think they're God. And when God give, casts the plagues or judgments, oh no, we got the technology and everything. We'll be all right. Here's another one. Graphene, another wonder of this is some of you don't know this, but what's already being injected for drugs? Injectable. Yes, I'm talking about injectable. They are putting graphene. Why? Because it helps with the drugs. It helps to, uh, with the medical conditions where people, uh, it might have to do with something magnetic or heat sensing and et cetera, but it's very useful. They find it for medical doctors. But what's important about it, well, I'll talk about that stuff later, okay? But I'll talk about that stuff later. But it does so many wonders. Now, when you're hearing about stuff like that, then you're like, wait, isn't that what we've always talked about at Revelation chapter 13 about people where they might put in something within them? Graphene is it, guys. That's a wonder product. Here's crazy. Here's something crazy. Okay. When you uh, touch your screen, it has to be flat and it's hard. But with graphene, it can bend. It's flexible. So when you touch the screen, they show this in the video clip, which is cr crazy. You can put this, wrap it around your arm, and then you can touch the buttons like that. That's crazy, right? Now, if you're talking about some New World Order technology and what it's going to do, that's it. But another thing that's scary about uh, graphene, when you look at uh, the VOA News, all right, they have a video in VOA News. Title of their video is Graphene Begins to Realize Its Potential. Graphene is stuff that you can actually put on your clothes, guys. So they can put this little stuff, all right, on your clothes and especially shoes. And there's this one scene of a guy who's wearing the shoes and then he's, he, the shoes that's touching some kind of mat, wherever he moves his foot, he moves the screen. So then it can connect to technology, to 5G stuff. It's really intense, guys, this graphene. But not only that, it could do something with DNA sequencing. Graphene is very helpful on that one, as well as stuff inside the brain. That way they can keep track of us brain circuit patterns and et cetera. Now, if that's not nuts, I don't know what is. And these are all sourced, and I've given you the sources for all of that. If that's what it is, then look at this. This is mankind here becoming practically one with what people talked about in comic books, Iron Man, where man becomes iron. Basically, human nature mingles in with technology. Isn't it funny, they, within man's thinking, when they thought about iron, that it's connected to technology, right? And they had that long time ago before we came up. But guess what? The Bible was before Iron Man. Look at Daniel chapter 2, the famous passage that people have talked about. Verse 41, And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes part of potter's clay, and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with what? Miry clay. Who is the clay? 
Clay is mankind. Look at verse 43. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they, whoever they are, shall mingle themselves with who? Seed of men. So men is referring to clay right here. And then the iron, whatever this iron is, it's mingling with humali uh, humanity. Well, people say it. Iron man, reference to technology. Why? Because technology, iron, becomes with man. Mingle. Iron mixed with clay. Guess what? It ain't comic book anymore. It ain't sci-fi anymore. They're really doing that. Where you're wearing it as clothes, guys. Where this stuff can be injected as well. And this kind of stuff is nuts, man. This kind of stuff is nuts. This is real stuff, and the scientists are proclaiming this years ago before the pandemic. This is years ago before the pandemic, guys, if that's really hard to believe. The devil's trying to bring in something really fast, isn't he? Let's look at some interesting passages. If we look at Daniel chapter 7, all right, Daniel chapter 7. And then Job chapter 40, Daniel chapter 7, and then I want you to turn to Job chapter 40. And then one last passage, one last passage is Revelation 13. Daniel 7, Job 40, let me go to the side here, that way people can see. Job 40 and Revelation 13. Once more, it's Job 40. Revelation 13, and also Daniel chapter 7. Now, for those of you who don't turn to the scriptures and just simply watching, I want to encourage you, please look at your Bible. Turn to the scriptures, because when you look at the scriptures, then you're going to believe if what I say is true or not. You know, people, they'll tend to listen to me and then they'll go, oh, I don't know if that's true or not because you're so used to a TV generation where you just hear stuff and it goes one year out the other. You can't think critically. You can't analyze. You can't think. You can't study. Well, you can start out by opening your Bibles and looking at the verse. For all you know, I could be lying to you, like I said. How many times have I said that, right, guys? All right. Now, in... Daniel chapter 7, we know that this is the Antichrist right here. The Bible says at verse 7, After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and brake in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had how many horns? Ten horns. Now, people know this. Usually, uh, by, I would dare say all Bible scholars and preachers, they will agree that the ten horns are in reference to the ten iron toes being mingled with the clay in Daniel chapter 2. And you can double check that one and read it again. All right. We already read that, but you can clarify it again. All right, if this is refer the ten horns are referring to the ten iron toes mingled with the clay, then these horns must be iron then, right? These are iron men. Oh, the Bible talked about iron man before comic book iron man came out, didn't it? But Job 40, uh, no, excuse me, I, not Job 40. If you keep reading verse 8, I considered the horns, right, these ten iron horns, and behold, there came up among them another, what? Little horn. So this little horn from iron horn comes out. So then this is a little iron horn. For whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. That little horn that Bible scholars will agree is the Antichrist. So then this Antichrist, notice, is made out of iron. Did you catch that? So this Antichrist 
is made out of iron then if he comes out of those horns. But this is not a surprise. Look at Job 40. Job 40. Satan, he is made of iron. Satan is made of iron. Look at Job 40. People say behemoth is a dinosaur. No, that's referring to Satan. I'm not going to prove it in this study because I've done it many times. But look at Job chapter 40 and then we'll read verse 18. Behemoth here at verse 15, right? Verse 19 is going to prove to you that Satan, okay? If you compare that with Leviathan in Isaiah. But that's all I'm going to say. I gave a clue. Point is, we know that behemoth is Satan. Look what he's made of at verse 18. His bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like what? Bars of iron. Now, I would like to ask this question. Go to Revelation 13. Then this beast that comes out out of the sea, I wonder if he is made out of iron in the biblical term. But that's the biblical term for it, right? What is today? What are they using today for their iron technology? What's the mineral? It's graphene. So I would like to ask you this question. If Satan is composed of all of this iron technology, which is graphene, right? That's the mineral they're using for iron technology today. If, say, if Satan is composed of this uh, iron or iron technology, what's he going to be composed of? Graphene then. Doesn't that blow your mind? I wonder... I'll just put this as a wonder, all right? Not as a doctrine. I wonder if he's made out of graphene. Then wouldn't this make more sense? <laughs> Look at Revelation 13. This is crazy, man. If he's made out of graphene, then this stuff is going to make sense. And I, uh, this is the beast, right, at verse 3? The Antichrist. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. Why? Because this beast, what if he's made out of graphene? And because people are in wonder mode with this graphene through its all technology, how much more with the beast, the Antichrist? Wouldn't they be in greater wonder? You know, uh, I don't know if you knew this. You know what graphene is called? What people call, been calling it? Wonder material. They call it a wonder material. This is from the Lindau Nobel Laureate meetings. In their blog title, The Wonder Material, How Graphene is Set to Change the World. And you can simply type it on Google and research it yourself. They all call it that, the wonder material. Wait a minute. Verse 3, and all the world what? Wondered after the beast. You want me to tell you something even more crazy than that? Didn't you know for graphene, which you did not realize before, that it can do such wonders of technology, which we've heard so much about, but it can even heal itself? Title of the article. This is from Nature. Title of the article from Nature, published August 22nd, 2012. Title of the article, Graphene, Heal Thyself. It's amazing. It has its own healing properties. Wait a minute. Verse 3, I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was what? He can heal himself. Whoa. Make sure you think twice. Now, I'm going to show you an even more crazy one. This is even really crazier, okay? In the video uh, that I uh, told you about graphene, why it will take over the world, I mentioned about that video. If you watch that, it has a very interesting ending in that video. It says, can you make graphene by yourself? And they said, you can. What you can do is this. You first take out a pencil, and then you mark. So notice this pencil mark. So then you just make marks as best as you can. And what you do is that you take a scotch tape, you stick it on that mark, okay? Don't dig deep now, all right? I'm going to get there. 
So you can put a, uh, Sean, don't connect dots, all right? All right, so then you take this sticky tape and put on this mark, and then you pull it out, all right? When you pull it out, then it fades, right? Then you do it again. Once you do it again, then it fades even more. Then you do it again, and then it can either hit this or you have to keep doing that. And once you keep doing that with the tape, you'll see little elements of graphene, actually. So notice that elements, watch this now, you ready? Notice that elements, these little bits of graphene, are inside a mark. Okay, you want me to tell you something more wild? Now, what was it that people were concerned about? That sometime in the future, what if graphene is the one that will pave the way for the mark of the beast? And that elements of it will be for the mark. When you put that mark, it's going to, elements of graphene will contribute it. Well, let me tell you something even way crazier than that. Okay, so this is a, a, a black mark right here, right? What a nice black spot you notice, a black mark. Doesn't that look, if you look at a leopard spots, it looks like this. What is the beast? He's a leopard. What is a leopard's mark? What is the mark of the beast? It looks like this, guys. And what if the people who have that mark, there are elements of graphene inside it? Boom! Okay, look, look at the verse. Look at Revelation 13. All right? So people, when they, they always look at Revelation 13, 17. And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Okay, so that's the passage, mark of the beast. And then people are wondering if graphene is in this mark, if it's going to contribute to it. Well, let me, well, they don't read, they didn't read and connect dots. If it's the mark of the beast, what is the beast? It's the mark of a leopard, guys. The beast is a leopard. Look at verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a what? Leopard. Look at, look at the leopard's skin, okay? It has that kiss mark, but if you zoom in closer, it's like a pencil mark over like that. Nuts, huh? And then inside the mark is what? Graphene that people were always scared about. Man, crazy. But... If that's not enough, let me show you even more how this connects to Mark of the Beast. Now, look at verse 18. Here is wisdom. All right, if you have wisdom, you're going to catch this then about the mark. Okay, how are we going to find out more about the mark? Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is a number of a what? Man, and his number is what? 600. Three score and six. So it's six, six, six. Three sixes. And not only that, it's a number of a what? Man. Now, guys, do you know what man is composed of? All right, let's go step by step here. <laughs> Carbon, in its purest form, can do diamond, but it also can produce graphite, right? Where we get the graphene and then graphene oxide later on. Now think about this, carbon, man is composed of it. Carbon is the root and the seat of all life. It is the most abundant life in the universe in what place? It is the sixth most abundant life in the universe. Let me tell you something crazier. Man is composed of carbon-12, okay, mostly. That's the one that they're mainly composed of is carbon-12. That's the number one carbon. All right, I don't know if people can see that. Let me move it. So it's composed of carbon-12. You know what carbon-12 is composed of, guys? Six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. It is right here, 666, this thing right there. So if you look at, uh, so that's really insane. So either it's uh, carbon or it's uh, the graphene 
uh, oxide, I think. So it's either those. But anyways, the point is, is that they're all connected. But it is the sixth most abundant life in the universe. Six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. For it is the number of a what? Man. So Satan has to use a mark that has to do with the inward man. He's doing something inside, maybe. Maybe that would explain why people who have the mark, their inside soul is damned. Food for thought. Food for thought. Oh, by the way, the atomic number for it, for some of you who don't know, is six. The atomic number for it is six. For some of you who didn't know much about that with carbon. Now, let me tell you something else that's interesting about uh, the word. How we got the word graphene from where it was invented, and you can even do a simple Wikipedia. This is fascinating. So it's around 1789, Germ German mineralogist, Werner, W-E-R-N-E-R. -E but the word, when he came up with that, which is how we were able to have uh, the pencils, so then where people were able to use pencil and have the graphene element, the name came up from Werner, supposedly, and it's originally stemmed from the Greek word graphene. Graphene means written, okay? Now, I want you to see something crazy here. Look at Revelation chapter 14, verse 1. Verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion with him in 144,000, having his father's what? Name what? Written in their what? Foreheads. Notice they don't have the name of the beast on their foreheads. They have the name of the father on their foreheads, right? So these people don't have the mark of the beast. They have the mark of God, right? There is no doubt from Revelation 14, especially since we just passed the mark of the beast at 1718, God was deliberately following that context, right? He's contrasting the father's mark with the beast's mark. Now, what did God call it? He called it written on their foreheads. Wait a minute. So he called the mark what? That's why mark equals written. And graphene, where, the, where we got graphene from, it means what? Will the beast then have the uh, use the graphene, which is written on their forehead? Can it get any plainer than that? That's crazy, isn't it? Let me repeat it again for some of you who just got lost, all right? <laughs> all right, people are wondering if the mark of the beast will compose of graphene, right? All right, why do you think the scriptures might hint that is so? Because the reason why is when you trace the root word graphene, it means written. And Revelation 14 showed you that the mark of God, it means written. Following the context of what? Mark of the beast, which should mean written or graphene, graphene. Crazy, crazy. But this is even crazier when Wikipedia worded it this way, when they explained what graph graphene meant and how it was formed. The ability to leave marks on paper, the ability to leave marks on paper and other objects gave graphite its name. Given in 1789 by German mineralogist Abraham Gottlob uh, Werner, or Werner, it stems from graphene, meaning to write, meaning to write or draw in ancient Greek. The New Testament was originally written in ancient Greek. But we don't have to go to Greek. All you have to look at is the King James English, Revelation 14, 1, following context of Revelation 17, 18 behind it. The written is referring to the mark. Yeah. Crazy, huh? So it's akin to the mark. Now, 
you're going, man, this is nuts. Then this element is going to contribute to the mark of the beast. Yes, I believe that 100% true fact. I don't know if in the future it will be itself, but I, but I believe 100% it is definitely a contributing product factor to this mark. It has to, because it's the advancement of technology in the future that everyone's going for. It's the mineral that everyone's going for. It's the most. It's the number one. And not only that, there are scriptural references that just match, match out of all minerals you can think of. Graphite, where graphene comes out of, that mineral is the best candidate out of all candidates you find when you look at the scriptural references. Look at Revelation 2, Revelation chapter 2. So far, people can hear me and no blur in connections, right? All right. Yeah, because this is a lot of stuff. So, <laughs> Revelation chapter 2. And then we'll look at verse 20 and verse 14. Now, before we come to these verses, let me read the articles first so that you can see what's going on, which is crazy. If hearing about all this stuff about graphene within us, right? Because Revelation 13 says what? In. It says in. So there are people who talk about this. Uh, there's a video where it says, what if you were injected with graphene? So there's a video on that in the channel What If on YouTube. And if you were injected with graphene itself, then actually it caused problems within your body. So even though they're, like I told you before, uh, this, is, uh, this is not misinformation. These are from the sources that are standard, mainstream, and scientific that I quoted. They have drugs, and then they use graphene to, do, uh, to inject people to help out. But... They can only do it in either small forms or they have to mingle it, right? It's not like purely like a graphite stone inside and stuff like that. Because we're not, we're not there. Obviously, people would die if it was stuff like that. So graphene oxide is used for injections to help out. Because one example is from Science Direct from their magazine, Materials and Design, Volume 196, November 2020. Title of their article is Injectable. Okay, Injectable. You all heard that? Injectable anti-inflammatory and conductive hydrogels based on graphene oxide and dia uh, diacerine terminated forearm polyethylene glycol for spinal cord injury repair. <laughs> if I got all those scientific terms down. So graphene oxide, from graphene and graphite, it was helpful with the injectable drugs to supposedly technology and mainstream people see it as helping others. But we're not to a point where you're totally injected with all of the amount of graphene. So notice that they're already inserting within man then. You notice that? That's the point. The point is we're not there yet, so that's proof that we're not in the tribulation. But it shows right there from the scientific journals I read that they're heading toward there. You notice that? And it's within man. I mean, I told you, they're putting graphene in clothes and shoes. You're wearing it, guys. It's like becoming it. That iron mixed with miry clay. But not only that, another, another weird one is that the mask, originally there was a controversy where people were putting graphene stuff on the mask so then it became a toxic issue that I think it was in Canada so they had to shut it down it was pretty bad but notice that see they're starting to put it as protection now I need this mark excuse me mask as protection what for my body and then they had the audacity to put uh, graphene stuff with it. The title of the article, so this is from CBC News, straight from Canada. Montreal, potentially toxic masks distributed in schools and daycares in Quebec. And then when you keep reading down, it, uh, the gray and blue masks that they were talking about, 
it was all connected to the graphene. So it's not, notice how they're really trying to become one now. But this is even more so. This is from graphenea. So they major in graphene or graphene oxide or graphite. So they major this stuff for technology. And in one of their articles, it's titled graphene on the human body. See, they're all putting it on you. This is heading toward that. Why? Because it's easier to access. What person would do that? Isn't it? We're so lazy. Technology makes us lazier. It's lazy to take out a watch and wrap it around you. It's just easier if it's on you. Especially if it's a mark. Right, guys? How many of you want that? Raise your hand. Bless God. Praise the Lord. You know, run the aisle. <laughs> if that's not nuts enough, What's even nuts enough is some people are wondering what happens when it's injected in you. So then obviously it's harmful. We're not there yet, but they mention where they realize, and this is all part of a DNA genetic process, that if a person can survive with that one, and then graphene don't last too long inside the body actually. So that's why we're able to eat some form of graphene after barbecuing meat, right? Because obviously it doesn't last there long as that, and it lasts long enough to cause that much damage and harm. But they're trying to work out ways. There are too many science journals and reports on this research work on how we can put graphene in a, within us without harming us. But if you do survive with it, they're even working on if it helps out with mutations now. Remember, that's how the body and the genetics change is through mutations. What if graphene, I say what if, this is not fact and we're not there yet, okay? But following along these sources, what if you have the mutation and then our evolution of genetics change then? Title of the article from the Scientific Reports, article number 3469, dated 2013, guys. Graphene oxide can induce in vitro and in vivo mutagenesis. So in other words, within a controlled environment with lab experiments or even with the biological person organism itself. That's how they tested that. So that's pretty nuts what they're doing. Another thing about uh, graphene, how close it can be with iron mixed with miry clay. I mentioned to you about they're trying to connect it to cell phones and technological devices to keep track of biological patterns, right? This can include brain patterns. Title of the article from Science Daily, from their Science News, dated January 24, 2009. Title of their article, Graphene Can Hear. Not just the brain roaring or circuits like going like that, but it can hear your brain even whisper the low functions of it. Isn't that nuts? This is scary where we're getting toward, guys. But here's another one from uh, the, the channel, To Delft, and this is from their video, Sequencing DNA with Graphene. This is a scientist who is trying to show D DNA sequencing, and what he did was is that he took some, I don't know if I'm interpreting this accurately, but you can watch the video and then get a more accurate representation. But basically, he took some DNA sample, and then through that, he was able to take elements of graphene. And then through this little amounts of graphene uh, with the DNA to help out with the DNA sequencing, all of it done was through a wafer or even through a chip, they called it. This is getting closer and closer. This is like in the body pra practically, you know? You notice how man is becoming one. Iron mixed with what? Miry clay. But this became a controversy where a professor from, the, uh, from Spain, Pablo Campra, and he had to do obviously independent research himself because we all know mainstream scientist organizations and schools, are, they don't want to approve of this. So he had to do independent research, and this is empirical, and this is in ResearchGate website, all right? He did actual empirical studies on this one. So he had to do it by himself. 
through micro Raman spectroscopy. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But through this, he took some elements of the Fauci fungus. All right. He took some of samples of Fauci's fungus. And then he found, which was shocking to him, he claimed it was graphene hydroxide. Not oxide, but hydroxide. So if uh, the professors, there's another professor named Novak who explained it that way, that it was uh, graphene hydroxide. What was more, and he's a chemist, all right? So I'm quoting only from uh, university research doctors, and this guy's a German chemist. So he mentioned, and they claimed, and I'll put it as they claimed, okay? They claimed that these were sharp razor edges, and they did it through their research. And they pulled up the paper, and they even put in the end, look, it is a job of scientists that we should discuss this. So anything that is disagreed or challenges made, we welcome it. That's what they did. And they claim that they found these sharp razor edges over there. So take a, man, if that's crazy right here, look at Daniel then chapter seven, Daniel chapter seven. I said Revelation two, right? So keep your hand there. We go to Daniel chapter seven. So some people are wondering, I wonder if I uh, accidentally swallowed Fauci's fungus and then had a bad stomach ache and it just caused biological problems inside and I had to go to the bathroom a lot. And then with Fauci's fungus, there were reports claiming that people were being teared up inside or one woman's breast as if it was like a razor cut. So some people were claiming after uh, taking Fauci's smelly fungus that that's what happened. If that was the case, that it's sharp razor edges inside, that was a result from graphene within. Remember, for iron technology that the Antichrist is going to use, it's going to be, there's no doubt, the number one contender right now is graphite, where you can have graphene, graphene oxide, graphene hydroxide, or whatever out of it. So if it's composed from this guy, and this guy is referring to this one, sharp razor edges within, because there are little pieces like this, right? If that's what he claimed to find, and that's what people claim to tear up everything inside, the Bible also says that the iron teeth of the beast, that's what it's supposed to do. It's to tear up everything. Look at Daniel chapter 7. The Bible says at verse 7, after this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great, what? Iron teeth, that's referring to the Antichrist beast, okay? And he has that iron teeth, but what's the job of iron? Throughout every verse in your Bible, most of them, most of them, iron is a reference to this. It devoured and break in what? Pieces and stamped the what? Residue. Oh, it kind of looks like this. It kind of looks like this. Whoa. You know, the more that I read about current events, of what's going on in our world, I'm seeing Bible prophecy fulfilled before my eyes, and I know that book is real after that. Let me tell you something even crazier than that, okay? Oh, but Pablo Campra's article, it's titled in ResearchGate, sorry, I got to give the source, Detection of Graphene in Fauci's Fungus, okay? You know what I mean. So if that's what they claim to be true, and uh, me, I don't know how much of it I believe, all right? But I believe in giving out all information from scientists right here. And then that's the job of science. We're supposed to discuss challenge hypothesis and we're supposed to discuss together and find the truth somewhere, okay? So that's why I did through all this information. But not just within us, right? If that's the case, if this has to happen in the future, but even, didn't you know, right now, this is fact, you can, uh, they have, I told you that 
with barbecue meat, we have some elements of graphene in us, right? But now they, <laughs> they've designed it more, uh, they upgraded their technology to a point where you can put mark, 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 yes, mark on food and you can eat it. And it's titled, Edible Graphene is Here. And it, electronics in your food are coming. Can I repeat that? Edible graphene is here and electronics in your food are coming. And by the way, this is from Rice University too. Rice University, title of their video, graphene on toast, clothing, and cardboard has tasty potential. And that other article I read is pro-liberal, liberal source. I'm not reading from a conspiratorial extreme right-wing source. I'm reading from an extreme liberal blog that's considered to be highly factual to mainstream world. It's from Fast Company. By the way, if you watch that Rice University video, it's nuts. They mention about one of the graduate students there or professor mentioned there that you, we can have RFID tracking as a result through that. Why? To protect our health. It's for our betterment. One of the scientists said in that video, now why would we want, you might ask, why would we want graphene in our food? And I'm like, yeah, why? Why? What idiot would? And they explained the benefits of science, you know, like when we eat it, where the food come from, keep track of the food. You know, there could be harmful substances within there. And I think there are some cases of that. We have a history of that. They've done that with some of our food products, okay? So I think that's, uh, that's what the scientists and food companies have admitted. So that's just natural within life. So we all have a form of this. It is a number of man. We have some form of this inside, guys. We have some form of uh, graphene within us. But this one is extreme because you can decorate the food with the mark. They, he decorated a complicated owl in there. And you can eat it. And it's supposed to be, uh, what? Connected to electronics, guys. That's nuts. But didn't you know what the Bible says about that? This is so interesting. Look at uh, Revelation 14, verse 9. And you have Revelation 2 as well, right? All right, now look at Revelation 14, 9. It's so interesting, the wording of the verse here. And Revelation chapter 2. Let's start off with chapter 2, verse 20. Chapter 2, verse 20. The Bible says, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat what? Things sacrificed unto idols. Now, did you notice that? This is revelation. Okay? This is revelation. Doctrinal application of Revelation 2 applies with to tribulation. If this is tribulation, the Bible says they have to eat things sacrificed to idols. How do you do that? How do you do that? Well, here's another one. Look at Revelation 2, verse 14. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat what? Things sacrificed unto what? Idols. Okay, they have to have this in the future, guys. Okay, this is kind of weird. So, no doubt eating is tied to idol worship. Yes? All right, I don't know if people can see this, but I'll do the best I can. Let me know if something's cut off. All right, Ralph? All right, so eating is connected to idol worship. But... That's what's going to happen in the tribulation. The Bible says that, right? Is idol worship connected to the Antichrist? Yes. It's more so than that. This idol worship is connected to Antichrist and to Mark itself, guys. To the Mark. All right, look at Revelation 14. Look at this. We'll read verse 9. Verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast, right, and his image. See that? Idol worship, right? That's what the Antichrist would do. What's tied to idol worship? And receive what? His mark in his forehead or in his hand. Look at this. The Antichrist is going to have idol worship with a mark. 
You're going to have to have a mark when you do this idol worship for the Antichrist. But we saw Revelation 2. You also have to do eating. Think of which religion puts a mark on a piece of food and believes that it is the Lord Jesus Christ and that people practically worship it. Roman Catholicism. The Antichrist, he's going to be connected to Catholicism because Revelation 17 shows it. Well, that Antichrist, how is he going to do idol worship with that mark? If graphene has to do with the mark of the beast, imagine putting it on this idol or God and you eat it to worship him. And you truly have the mark really in you, so to speak. Man, that's nuts. But even so, if graphene helps out with putting a mark on food, you can prevent people from eating it then. You can keep track of people who are not following the world system and imagine that they can keep track of people then if they try to buy food that all has that mark. That'll be easier. That's why the Bible says in Revelation 13, verse what? Verse 17, you can't buy, sell unless you have the mark. See, you can't buy food. You can't buy anything, practically. Uh, look at James chapter 5, verse 3. James chapter 5, verse 3. I can't believe I have all this written out. I don't have time. All right. James chapter 5, verse 3. I thought that I didn't have mu much material for this, but it's going longer than I thought, so I better wrap this up quickly. Now, I was reading in the Bible. I was like, okay, so... Does the Bible say that we are going to have something inside us in the end times tribulation? Absolutely. The Bible talks about minerals that will be inside us. Uh, not us, meaning me. I'm going to be out of here at the tribulation. But inside humans who are on the Antichrist side, who are against God. In the last days, God is going to burn these people because they have some kind of element, the minerals inside them. In James chapter 5, verse 3. But before I read that, isn't this interesting? Graphene, you can go with practically everything, but there are two minerals that they're doing now to put within humans to help treat cancer. Now think about it. They claim cancer is the number one disease, right? Anyone would go for a cure for that one, right? Graphene is helping them out with that one. So many people would be receptive to graphene, but there's a second one that's very helpful, gold. So they, have, they are working with that. It's not new to them. This is from MDPI, and this is uh, the title of their article. Uh, it's dated, uh, it was re received May 2nd, 2021, revised at the 20th and then accepted at the 21st, and then published at the 24th of May. It belongs to the special issue, Biomedical Applications of Graphene-Based Nanomaterials. Title of their article, Gold Nanoparticles, Gold Nanoparticles, and Graphene Oxide Flakes Enhance Cancer Cells, Phagocytosis Through Granzyme Perforin Dependent Biomechanism, whatever that is. But see, they're using this kind of stuff. How many people with the world's supposedly leading disease would want this then? And what if this stuff goes inside to help, inside the people? The Bible says it has to happen. They will have gold inside them, and God will judge them. Look at this. If you don't believe me, James 5, verse 3. Your gold and silver is what? Isn't that interesting? The word canker. That, that's bodily sore stuff like that. Canker. Why would this say gold canker? And the rust of them shall be a witness against you. God's going to turn it to rust. And shall what? Eat your flesh. This gold that's a canker eats within their flesh as it were fire. What time period? Ye have heaped treasure together for the what? Last, it's last days. It's tribulation, guys. 
So what, so what would man want to do? They want to conquer it. They don't want it to rust like God would say. So you know what helps to prevent minerals and things to turn to rust? Graphene. Title of the article, from Tech Times, Science. Graphene paint, this wonder paint, might herald a rust-free world. So imagine if they want to put that gold... And the Bible says someday they're going to put gold inside. But then graphene has been a great contributor to help out with this process. So they're going to mingle with some of that or use it to contribute to help with that. Why? To prevent rust. What if that happens? Man, the imagination can run, right? You can see the scientists, how they can use this to... Graphene is definitely the wonder stone, the wonder mineral, the wonder element. It is what the Bible says, all the world wondered after the beast. Insane. Insane stuff that you're hearing. Look, uh, ah, yeah, come on. If I'm, okay, this is what I'll do, because I don't have time. Uh, this is just little stuff for next week then. So this is what I'll do. If you guys want to go home, you go home, all right? But I'm going, uh, so leave any time you want. I'm going to go over time just for tonight. I'm sorry. I keep saying that every night, right? You know, so. All right, then. But look at uh, Deuteronomy 27 and Joshua 8. Deuteronomy 27 and Joshua 8. I'm surprised how much I was able to dig up in this one. I thought I had little, so I kept searching for more <laughs> to make up for the timing of the lesson. All right, so we'll look at Joshua 8. Deuteronomy, Joshua 8, Deuteronomy 27. And then we're going to go to Job 19, all right? Job 19. There's one more, Job 19. The Bible is a phenomenal book, especially in crazy times that we're living in. It just becomes even more amazing, that book. And stuff, the verses that you read in your book, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't really see how it could be even applicable for end times. You know, the Bible says that tribulation saints, they're going to know more Bible than we do. I wonder why. Because we, are start, we look at the current times we're living in and seeing what those verses actually mean now. How about that? That's why I don't shy up. Some people might say that, you know, you're looking too deep into it. No, the Bible says at Daniel 12 that the tribulation saints, they're going to know more of that book than we do today. Why? Because they're seeing prophecy fulfilled before their eyes and the verses that we've all read and studied before, they see a deeper meaning behind it. That's why this is what the teachings I am doing is biblical, you have to understand. It is biblical. If it's something that's not clear, then you have to say it's not clear. And I'd rather be safe than sorry. So I don't teach it as doctrine, but I show you verses that, hey, these are things you should consider. Because later on in life, it might become more real than you think. And it might turn out to be more true than you think. And in the verse that you're looking at, you won't read it the same again and as before, right? <laughs> Now, look at this one. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 5, what does God say? And there shalt thou build an altar unto the Lord thy God, an altar of what? Stones. Thou shalt not lift up any what? Iron tool upon it. That's interesting. God does not want iron on his stone. Okay. All right, now I'm going to show you an amazing connection here, what this all ties in with everything, okay? Which is why I, can, I could not end it here, because this is, this is an amazing connection. God says this stone should have no iron, period, like period, no, no. 
Joshua 8, same thing. Joshua chapter 8. God repeats again for his altar of worship in verse 31. The Bible says, As Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones which no man hath lift up, what? Any iron. So God wants no iron on the altar. Now, hmm, look at Job 19.24. Job 19.24. Notice what's the tendency of man, okay? Job 19.24. That they were graven with a what? Iron pen and led in the what? Rock forever. So God doesn't want that, you know, as in the previous passages. Didn't you know this is the closest verse on graphene in the Bible? It's not proof of graphene. I cannot do that, but it is the closest reference or any indication to graphene. You might say, why? Because uh, he says an iron pen and lead. This is one and the same thing in the rock forever. You know what they do for writing? Black lead. You know what black lead is? That's graphene. For some of you who didn't know that. That's graphene. That's black lead. Okay, but anyway, I just tossed that over there, all right? It's not proof that Job was talking about, I had a pencil back then in the BCs, you know? Obviously, that's not what it means, but it is very interesting why the Holy Spirit worded it that way, and it's the closest thing that I could connect to graphene or any indication to that. But it's not proof. I can't prove that Job had a pencil back in the BCs. Hey, guys, you know, I had graphene, you know? <laughs> But that's the point. So then, wouldn't it make sense that God does not want any iron on the stone, which is a tendency of man, which is why the Bible says in Daniel chapter 2, did you read that passage? The stone, which is God, it says cut without hands. No iron instrument touched it. Why? Because God wants, God sees the iron as an enemy to the stone. And God says, Jesus Christ says the stone is going to crush the iron feet mixed with clay. Daniel 2. Read that book. You don't believe me? Then read that passage, all right? But I don't have time to go there. Wow! That's why in the Old Testament, God says, don't touch the stone with iron. Why? Because God's seeing something in the future. I'm going to crush the iron with a stone. Because the stone represents Jesus Christ. So with their graphene technology, Iron Man technology, and everything they try to bring, God, you know what God's doing? This age that they're living in, this technological age, which is the digital age, information age that we live in, you know what Jesus Christ is trying to do with the stone? I'm going to prove that all of that is back to the stone age. Isn't that something? That's what God does with man's advancement of technology. We're in the digital age, information age, and et cetera. And God's like, no, I'm going to put you back to the stone age. That's why he takes out a stone, not touched with iron or any iron technology. Boom, like that. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. And then we'll look at verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Here's something very interesting. We know this passage, but I just never saw it this way before. That's what tribulation saints do, remember? The reason why they're going to know more of that book than us is because they're seeing things. And because they're seeing things in their time, the verses that we looked at before, we studied before, and we thought was crazy, batty, and that's conspiracy and stuff like that. No, they saw something else. They're like, no, we're seeing it come to pass, so the verse that we're reading, it's different from how you guys viewed it back then. It's deeper than what you guys thought before. We're only scratching the surface of it, guys. Uh, let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Now, I'm not going to give you, uh, we don't have time to turn to this passage, but if you look at Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 28, Jer uh, I won't write that. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 28, Jeremiah 6 verse 28 God refers iron as a reference to people who live in sin. 
So human sinners, all right, when they live wickedly in sin, God refers that as human sinners. But in the last days, it's amazing what God says. Graphene, they're wondering, and people are concerned, if this graphene stuff gets inside us, or it has something to do with even DNA, or even inside the brain, and then you can connect to devices and stuff like that. If such a time period comes where we can hit that eventually, I'm not saying now it's happening, but then later on, if technology keeps advancing and they do want to do that one day, then the question in our minds is, man, what if this graphene stuff, this iron technology that the Bible predicted about, would have to do something where they control our minds, that the devil can use our minds? You know what the Bible warned? 1 Timothy 4. Verse 1, now the Spirit expressly that in the what? Latter times. Sometime in the future then. All right, we're in the last days of the church now. And then it's heading toward the tribulation. What? Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their what? Conscience. Why? Because we're supposed to do this medically to help out people's psychological mental conditions or their own conscious that's having problems. So this graphene stuff could help detect and then help out the doctors to trace and etc. What does it do? Having their conscience what? Seared with a hot iron. How about that? Wow. Like to go home and pray about that for a while? Jeremiah 17 and Hebrews 8. One more big goodie. But we have to go to three passages so I can wrap it up. Jeremiah 17, Hebrews 8, and Revelation 17. Hebrews 8, Revelation 17, and Jeremiah chapter 17. Now, the Bible says that Israel's sin was written as a pen of iron in their minds and hearts, okay? That's what the Bible says. But in the future, what God's going to do is God's going to change that iron mind and heart, okay? Follow along with me. Israel's sin, God considered it as it was written down as a pen of iron in their minds and hearts. But God says, one day, I'm going to change that. I'm going to change it where it won't be like an iron pen in their minds and heart, but that rather they will have the common sense of just worshiping God in their minds and hearts. But all minds and hearts will have it as one when they worship God. Okay, look at this, all right? Now, let's say that... Uh, Let's say I were the devil. I wonder when I read these passages, I wonder what I would want to do. Just take that for now and see as we read these verses, okay? If I were the devil, I wonder what I would do when I look at these verses. 17 verse 1. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron, okay? And with the point of a what? Diamond. Diamond purest carbon, all right? We see carbon all over here. It is graven upon the tables of their heart and upon the horns of your altars. So Noah said Israel's heart was, uh, when they're living in sin, it's in iron. But God's going to change that. Look at Hebrews 8. What is he going to do with their hearts and mind? Okay. The sin that's within their hearts and mind called iron, right? All right, let me write it that way. We don't get lost. And I don't have room anywhere. Sin, iron, heart. Oh, yikes. Okay. Thank you for putting up with me, church. I hope that you're getting something from this lesson. I don't want you to miss this gold mine that I'm going to show you, okay? So, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10 through 11. For this is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. One day, God's going to take that sin that's with an iron, right? 
their, that iron is written, marked in their hearts with sin. God said, I'm going to change it. I'm going to put my laws in their minds and in their hearts. Okay? So remember, their minds and their hearts in Jeremiah was marked with iron. But God's going to change it where he's going to mark it down himself. And if God marks it down, notice in verse 11, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord for what? All shall know me from the least to the greatest. You know what that verse is saying? Sometime in the future when I have my kingdom, I'm going to somehow put it in their heart and minds that automatically everyone knows that they all know the Lord. They're all going to know God and they're going to worship him. If I'm the devil and I read that verse, wouldn't I want that for my kingdom? I want it in everyone's hearts and minds that just somehow inwardly they will know me and worship me. And if you can somehow put some substance or maybe, maybe one day graphene inside to do that one for this and this, what wonders could it do? And the devil could receive worship, especially if the devil read Jeremiah 17, 1, and he realized that when people live in sin, it's called what? Iron. God said, marked it with iron. And what if the devil saw ahead and say, maybe I could do that then. Put something, iron technology or something like that so that they can be marked with sin. And at the same time, somehow put in, in their hearts and mind where they will automatically worship me. And they don't need to be told that. What if I put something iron inside them to accomplish the job? Wouldn't the devil want to do that? He wants to, I'll tell you one thing, he will imitate whatever God does. He wants his own worship system. If God's going to receive that kind of worship, so much more the devil. So how everyone going to know it is, let's just put something right here and in here so you can automatically know and worship me. The last verse, right? Revelation 17, 13. Revelation 17, 13, it will happen. The iron men, remember those guys, the 10 iron men? They worship and do Satan's bidding with one mind. See, so something, they already have one mind together, one heart together. They automatically know that will happen. And those are what? Iron men. What if Satan puts that within people now? I should have connected it with it. Then it would have been better. All right. <laughs> So see, we connect to a hive with each other, controlling everybody with something iron inside. And then, you know, you all worship me, says the Antichrist. Wow. Imagination can run wild with science, what it's accomplishing today. The wonders and the glory of science. Praise Jesus Christ, right?